Finding edible plants in the wild has been challenging but a lot of fun. And while survival really depends on finding enough calories to keep you going, it sure is nice once in a while to come across some tasty treats like nuts and berries. The one thing that I learned is that almost every single wild edible plant that I came across has some sort of other secondary medicinal use. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to measure the efficacy of these wild plants because they've never really been tested. You know, they use it for upset stomachs and sometimes they have absolutely no use whatsoever and more of a placebo effect. That being said, there are a few notable plants, and we're gonna go over them in this episode, that have been proven to have an actual effect, a positive effect on human health. I'm gonna show you a few choice edible plants as well as some well-known medicinal plants in this region. There's a definite difference between veggies and fruits that you would buy in the store and their wild equivalents. Typically, they're much smaller in the wild and not as sweet, not as packed full of vitamins and minerals either. Did you know that one of the most widely used commercialized grapes, the Concord grape, actually is derived from the smaller wild grapes? Although there isn't near as much juice in wild grapes in comparison to the store-bought ones, you can still make jams and even alcohol from them. Whoa, oh. Wow, look at all these grapes. Grapes, they're not obvious. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You can see they're starting to come in. Obviously, they're gonna be of the red variety here. Uh, the big, obviously, I'm not gonna ramble on too much about grapes. You know what grapes are, high in sugar, good source. These will not be ready until fall, kind of like normal grapes that you would get. The difference is that these end up being really small, like the size that you see, they don't get that much bigger. It's not like you see commercial grapes in the stores, much like a lot of the foods. Natural grapes, very, very small. Obviously the animals love them, but in the fall, if you come across them, they're sweet, just like a normal grape, but they don't have a lot of flesh to them. It's mainly seeds with a little bit of the, sh uh, the sugar and the, and the jelly in it. But yeah, these things are all over the place. Huge, this whole tree, that's just absolutely coated with grapes. It's so many of them. There are some plants that seem to offer the best of both worlds, a great food source, as well as well-known medicinal uses. And the burdock is one such plant. Almost the entire plant is edible, the leaves, the stalks, and the roots. However, in modern times, it's best known for its medicinal uses and can be found in local health food stores. Most of us look at this plant simply as a weed that gets attached to hikers' pants when you're strolling through the forest. But it's so much more than that. things if you well I was gonna show you but you can see the burdock if you're like me whenever you're hiking around this stuff here is pretty notorious for sticking to your pants and you come out and you think it was just a nice walk and your pants are just coated in these things because if they can stick to your skin they can stick to your your pants and your shirts and everything like that this plant was actually introduced in North America it's not native here but it was introduced because it's chock-a-block full of vitamins and high in iron. And the whole plant is edible, so you can, I don't even know, like, I know they say that all the time, but I'm like, who's gonna eat this? Like, you got the dry seeds, like, even if they're young, I, I don't know, maybe they don't eat this thing, maybe they're just saying, like, the stalks and everything like that can be eaten as a pot herb, you know, in stews and stuff like that, or as a salad. But I would never use it. I don't know why. Even if it's high in vitamins and iron, no one would use it. They've been using it for centuries, but nowadays you're not gonna do it because you have to boil this two to three times. You have to change the water. I, I think there's just something in it or it's too bitter, or it's too tough, like the leaves. Uh, it's It may be high in all that stuff, but who's gonna do that? Are you gonna boil it two to three times and you have to add some baking soda and stuff like that? I don't know. It's kind of cool though that it has all these potential, you know, things with it the tonic 
for instance. You can make a tonic out of this that's supposed to be one of the best liver tonics. It's good for liver, kidney, and all that other stuff there, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know why you would do that. Other than the fact that it was introduced, it's ignored now, so now it just grows everywhere and sticks to your legs. But if you've seen it, that's what this stuff is. And now you'll know, whenever you see burdock, this actually is a super healthy plant, super healthy. It's sometimes difficult to know just how effective some of these plants are for treating various health issues because the major labs are usually tied up researching pharmaceutical drugs. However, there are some plants that have been used for centuries with extensive research done on them. One such plant, St. John's wort. In fact, it's proven to be an effective treatment for minor to moderate depression, so much so that it can interfere with prescription drugs. So if you're currently on medication for depression or anxiety and you're watching this video and you're like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna try to drink some of this stuff or use it to treat my depression, make sure you talk with your doctor first. The last thing you wanna do is end up in the hospital. medicinal plant here. This is St. John's wort. You may have seen it, maybe you're not even aware that it's around here. This stuff is literally all over the place. And the flowers, when soaked in water, alcohol, or oil for about four hours, is used to treat depression. It's proven to treat depression. You can actually buy St. John's wort in the store, whether it's your local grocery store, pharmacy, or whatever. So if you're into sort of naturopath stuff, it's I don't think you can eat this plant, so I don't recommend that. But uh, again, it's main use when you're out there and if you didn't have access to medical or whatever, or you were in a situation and someone had chronic depression or something in your group, you could possibly use this to help treat or, or minimize the results. I don't know how effective it is in comparison to pharmaceutical uh, medications and everything like that, but definitely uh, proven to treat depression. So that's kind of a, a cool little thing and it's all over the place, but it's the flowers that you want. This thing here, it looks like the flowers are gonna be coming in really big, 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 big and strong here. Yeah, it's uh, an interesting little plant, pure proven medicinal use. There are always plants that will offer a better source of energy, whether it's high sugar content in something like a raspberry or the fat content of nuts, including walnuts and hazelnuts. And I had no idea that both of those trees were all around me. I mean, I have a black walnut tree in my backyard and I probably walked by hazelnut and walnut trees for years without even knowing what they were. I'm not gonna break them off. I'll break one off here. This is a uh, hazelnut tree. It's an American hazelnut. Oh, here's one. Oh, these are before they're mature. I know it doesn't look like a hazelnut, but inside, if you tear this away, you'll see that the hazelnut itself, it's not mature yet, but that will turn like that brown. You know, if you're not sure with what a hazelnut is, it's like Nutella. You guys know that chocolatey hazelnut spread? Nutella? Well, it's made from this. Well, not American hazelnuts. These are actually smaller versions. I think they're called, what, filiberts? I think that's the other hazelnut. They're the larger ones. This is kind of a smaller variation. Same kind of flavor. Hard nut on there. Big nut inside there. I believe harvesting isn't for like another few weeks or even a month. They're not quite ready, but this is cool. This is the very first time I've ever seen. I've seen uh, so far, what, the hickory nut tree, but we haven't seen the nuts on there. Walnut, we got a walnut tree in our backyard, which is really cool, except for when you're playing badminton and you break your feet on that. But this is the very first time I've ever seen a hazelnut tree. Well, a bush, I don't know. Is it? Does, I don't even know shrub. how big, shrub. There you go. It's a shrub. So not a tree, not a bush, it's a shrub. Thanks, Liam. <laughs> Liam actually knows a lot about this stuff. He's equal on this 
and he actually in some cases knows more about it because he's been doing a lot of research for us but very cool very excited to see the fact that we came across this hazelnut i'm not sure about the leaves or anything else about the tree but i know for a fact that these nuts are edible so and good source of uh, fat protein in the wild kind of cool St. John's wort isn't the only well-established plant for medicinal purposes. The yarrow plant has been used for hundreds of years as an anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, as well as a styptic, which helps stop bleeding. Historically, it was used during the Civil War to help soldiers stop the bleeding from cuts and lacerations. There's even historical evidence that supports the Romans used it for the same purpose. In fact, its Latin name, Achillea millifolium, actually comes from the Greek mythological character Achilles, it was said that he carried a pouch of this plant to treat the wounds of his soldiers. Of course, that is fiction, but it is based on the effectiveness of this amazing plant. This, listen, when you know what to look for, it, this is what is supposed to be confused with uh, the Queen Anne's lace, but I mean, you look at these leaves here, these leaves are completely different. The flower looks different as long as you're paying attention, but this is actually one of the most widely used medicinal plants in the world, even right now. Now you can eat, uh, I'm not sure which parts of it, but you can eat the plant, it's not poisonous. But it's considered usually too bitter and they, they usually boil it. In Sweden, it sometimes uh, replaces hops uh, in the brewing process as well. But this stuff here, is used as a styptic, you know, to stop bleeding. So they make a tea. I think it's the leaves they said. I think that's what it is. So like a uh, tablespoon of dried leaves in a cup of boiling water. I believe that's what it is, the ratio. I don't know, random information, not that you're gonna remember that. But it can be used that it'll treat uh, upset stomach. Uh, I think for women, it also helps uh, treat menstruation and menstrual cramps and stuff like that. It's a crazy useful plant and it's literally everywhere. Again, one of the most widely used still used thousands of years ago they they actually discovered the usefulness of this plant and it's still used today i think that's pretty cool but this one here like i said is usually the one that's confused with the wild carrot In the world of bushcraft and survival, it seems that most people focus on fire starting, shelter building, and hunting, at least for the purpose of making videos, maybe because it's a little more entertaining to watch. Now, obviously the skills of fire starting and hunting are gonna keep you alive short and long term, but I think people fail to understand the importance of edible and medicinal plants for long-term survivability. To function properly, our bodies require more than just basic calories or else you could just eat sugar all your life and you'd never need anything else. Having vitamins and minerals is integral to properly functioning healthy bodies. Not to mention the fact that a simple cut, a laceration in the wilderness with no hospitals or way to treat it can quickly lead to infections. Being able to stop wounds from bleeding or having the knowledge to kill bacteria are critical skills, especially if you're looking at long-term survival. I really hope you guys enjoyed the videos. This project has forever changed the way that I look at the natural world. And remember, if you're interested in learning about edible and medicinal plants, please just be extremely careful. Some of them may seem harmless, but there are so many plants and mushrooms out there that could land you in the hospital or the morgue. Be smart, be safe, and respect this planet. It's our only home.